fat, but he's sick. For those who came to the workshop yesterday, you saw and met, met him, but like, unfortunately he's not here. Um, today we're going to work in, um, on a specific topic, and I'm going to introduce you just before uh, what is design thinking, but we are going to focus on observation, and it's going to help you to actually um, identify how you can start a project, okay? And identify a real problem of your target. Does anyone uh, already have a project or an, or an idea uh, that they would like to work on today? Do you guys have an idea or just here? What, what do you expect from the workshop, actually? Just tell, raise your hand, otherwise I'm just going to pick someone to, to, to say something. The back of the uh, Okay. No, it doesn't work. I know. One, two, one, two. Ah, cool. Um, okay, so I'm going to go around and just pick someone to say something. Ah! Uh, you? What do you expect from the workshop? Uh, when I uh, see the name of the workshop, it's an uh, introduction to design thinking. Somehow I think that uh, my thinking is mixed. It had many thoughts and I cannot uh, identify my uh, thinking and um, Go straight from my end. There's a reason why I'm not sure this workshop. Okay. Do you do you know what the density is or not? Uh, you know, I don't know much about it. Okay. So that's a also the reason why I'm not sure this. Okay. Cool. Awesome. You. What do you, what do you, what do you expect from the workshop? Yes. Uh, <coughs> my friend finally here, and then I uh, just have a. Uh, a little bit of knowledge about the design activity. I want to hear to know more about it, and I think I can apply this one. Okay, cool. Um, do you guys want to be entrepreneurs? Entrepreneurs? Do you want to start, you know, in the future? Do you want to start your company? Yes, no? Say it. Raise your hand if it's yes. <laughs> you want to raise your hand? Okay, we're going to do with that. Uh, so, so I believe I've been working for Skoda for uh, two years now. I'm in charge of um, the incubation programs there. So, if you have any questions, just ask me. I've been, I've seen lots of startups since I'm working for Skoda, so around 200, like 200. Um, so, I know a few things about early stage entrepreneurs. So, if you're thinking about starting your own business, um, you can just ask me questions during the workshop or afterwards. Um, so before I start, uh, Wong is going to do a little ice just to wake you up because you seem all really tired and that's not good. Um, so yeah, I'm just going to let her take it. The thinking is, please, I need at least three hands up because this is, I'm sure someone will know what the thinking is. At least I know Tifan knows and Tan. So, and Tifan. Yes? Can, Tifan, can you give your mic, please? As far as I know, one part is uh, approaching problems like a designer. Okay, yeah, sure, it is. Exactly, thank you. Someone else? Have a guess, it's really easy. I'm, I, I, I said it yesterday, so you should know. Can you please give the mic to this man in the front? Design thinking is um, a giant methodology in terms of by focusing on the user. Yeah, see, you know, so you should raise your hand when you know it's hard. <laughs> I just raised it's free. Yeah, sure, I forgot about that. But this is really smart. So you know if it's written on it, you, should, you could just like raise your hand. Um, really good. Uh, so actually then thinking is, um, for the first part, um, a mix of three different important stuff. Uh, first of all, about measurability. It's something, uh, it focuses a lot about what people actually want. And viability is about everything related to business. So is the project viable, is something viable, are people actually willing to pay for something? And feasibility is about, uh, it is, uh, is it actually uh, technically possible? For those who actually attended the workshop yesterday, um, I'm sorry, I just repeat myself. But for those who actually, uh, for some of us, 
that you reflect on about design thinking, um, it's important that you understand that uh, when you're trying to start a business, it has to be a mix of the three different things. People, have, people need to actually will, um, need something that you, um, that you uh, want to work on, and we need to pay for it, and it needs to be technically feasible. Okay, what is the common point between the four companies here? And can I have some aircon as well? Because it's really hot in here. I'm sweating a lot. <laughs> Fund your project. 
And afterwards, they had this like a growth hack, which is do you own a Craigslist? No, uh, Craigslist is um, a really it's a it's a website that shows different apartments online where that you can rent. So actually, growth hack. Uh, Craigslist by taking all the, um, the the owners' emails and they were uh, they were uh, contacting them uh, when they were when their apartments were rented on Airbnb. I don't know. Um, okay, so design thinking is about four different steps to go from a, a, from a problem to a solution. So the first part that we are going to focus on today is about um, observation and what you're going to see today is that you have a lot of people that you need to observe and interview when you want to actually identify a real problem and then you focus on the, uh, you define a problem then you have like a oh, bunch of things about conception, about ideation and creativity and then you prototype, you test and then you launch the first two parts are a lot about design thinking and the last two parts are more about Lean Canva the thing that we saw and the Lean startup that we saw yesterday So, today we are going to understand the real potential, the real issue and opportunities that your um, target is are facing today. So, which is something is really important because observation is not only about interviewing and observing people; it's more about empathy. And so, something you need to understand is that people do not know what the problems are. It's about heading towards mindset. So if back in the years you ask people what they actually needed and wanted to go faster, they will actually only ask for more horses. They wouldn't ask for a car. So if you want to disrupt a, um, if you want to really disrupt a industry, you need to think outside the box. So it's a lot about understanding the issues of the users, but it's also a lot about creativity and thinking outside the box and differentiate, differentiate yourself. Uh, so far, any questions? So now I want you to think a little bit, like for a minute, and just think of how you would approach that person who is um, uh, choosing a film that she wants to see. Okay, she is looking for like movies to watch tonight in a um, supermarket. How would you approach that person, and how would you uh, observe that person to understand her needs? Just have a guess, like for a few, like a minute. You are the future founder of for instance, Netflix, and you're just thinking like, okay, what is the real problem of my users, and how can I help that person? And I want three people to talk at the end of the minute. Person? Yeah. She's young and um, doing the finding stuff in new release. Okay. So, yeah, so she's looking for something like uh, new. I think this is quite fresh in the city because uh, I think uh, she's not familiar with the city. So, she's looking for something. Okay. And how would you actually do to define her need? Like, how, how would you, what would you ask her? Um, what, how would you try to understand her issue today? The problem that she's facing today? It is not easy. <laughs> okay, that's fine. That's fine. Someone wants to say something? Yeah. Maybe I would ask her, what are you trying to do? Okay, yeah. For example. Really good. Someone else? One last person. One want to say something? Okay, no, I'm not sure. No. Okay. Um, so, when you want to observe someone, it's not only interviewing and asking her questions. 
Um, it's really good to have an, like to, uh, to have discussion with her. But first, uh, it's really important to know that if you really want to have empathy, you need to ask the questions why. Um, so when you first approach someone and someone you do, do not know, and you want to like just understand her day and what she's, uh, what are the, the issues that she's uh, facing for the entire day, you can ask her how actually how was your day? You just felt like this. Have a conversation with her. It's, it can be easy to think about different topics and different questions that you want to ask, but don't just do it as a, how can I say, don't just tick the boxes. Try to identify a little deeper, deeper, deeper in her emotions, how she feels, and ask her why. But this is the first, first thing you can do. You, you can go to her and, and ask her, okay, what are you doing today? So are you trying to find a movie and so forth, so, which is really good, but also try to understand the context. I'm sure that the answer that she's going to have uh, in the morning while she's, watch, while, while, sorry, she's looking uh, for a movie to watch is different than the answer, the answer that she's going to give you if it's like 4 p.m. or at the end of the day when she's coming back from work and there's lots of people in the supermarket. So also understand the entire context. What time of the day is it? Um, are there lots of people like, around her? Is she, is she in a hurry? Uh, the chef, kids around her, and so forth. Um, so it's not about just listening to what she says, it's also watching her in her body language as well. Okay, so five different me methods to observe someone. So the first one, as I said, mentioned is the interview, the semi-directed interview. So you're sitting or standing with someone, asking lots of questions, lots of questions, focusing on the why, and going to deepen the emotions. The second one is about immersing yourself in the, into the context, into um, the life of your target. So some of, some, of, some of good entrepreneurs, what they do, is that they actually try to do the same different steps that the target is doing. So for instance, if you're targeting um, young professionals that are working in a financial district for a big company, then for instance, try to do the same thing as, her, as, as your target. Try to take the the cab, the taxi to go to work, try to have like a long day, then go back to like in the busy uh, in the busy city and so forth. Just try to understand the emotions so that it's going to help you to have empathy. The third thing is about um, the third. Uh, the, for me, the third and the fourth thing is kind of are kind of similar. It's a lot about um, focus, like um, basing yourself on um, research and have been done by professionals and people that actually know your targets. Um, Startups are the best. Interviewing other startups is a really good way to, for you to understand how your industry and your target is thinking and so forth because they have been working on it for a long time. And the last thing is uh, benchmarking yourself, uh, benchmarking the industry and try to see different technologies and, um, that are being uh, raised for the last years. Any questions? No. Thank you. The benchmark? Yeah. What yeah. Do you benchmark yeah. So I can mention uh, the industry um, is about um, um, benchmarking is about finding different ways for a target to solve an issue. So, for instance, um, when you are facing, uh, for instance, if you wanted to solve the uh, the issue of finding a restaurant, I don't know, in the city, you need to see how you talk, what your target is doing. Uh, to solve this problem. So it's going to help you to have different benchmark, like to, to see the different companies that are already trying to solve this problem and uh, it's, it's going to give you a global picture actually of the industry. Okay? Uh, the other thing is, which is really important is that lots of people only focus on uh, the perfect target and don't try to understand um, the worst case persona, uh, but it's actually a really good insight. It's going to, be, to bring you a really good insight. So early adopters are people that you're really trying to target. So people that are going to, because you're solving the problem, they're going straight away going to adopt your technology. And it's going to, going to be the first people that are, that are willing to pay for it. These people, when you are, uh, when you really solve the problem, they're going to help you to actually attain a like a global market, um, which is the validation part. And people that do not need your, your solution at all 
these are the worst case persona. So for instance, if you take the example of Airbnb, Airbnb, they actually focused first on backpackers that were trying to look for really low cost rents, like apartments to travel. And like the worst case persona would be a businessman that earns 10,000, like $100,000 a year and then do not need to actually find a cheap place. Interviewing that person is really insightful for you because you're going to, you're going to ask them questions like, okay, so why don't you travel, like why, why don't you travel for cheap, uh, like a, a cheap place? Okay, because you're like, okay, I don't, I have the money to pay for something, typical, like for a beautiful, for a beautiful place. And you can go deep in the conversation trying to ask, okay, but are you looking for something local? Like you want to be, um, to meet uh, really the, the culture of the, of the country that you want to, um, to want to visit? And you're going to see that maybe there are other things that you can add to your, to your company, to your startup, other functionalities. So for instance, uh, now Airbnb, they offer also like the experience part, uh, which is first of all, like at the beginning was not the real, uh, the real focus. Questions? Okay, so there are different tools. So you all, uh, did you all receive a paper like with the different steps? Cool. So we're going to use that. I'm going to explain the different, uh, the different tools that you have on paper. And it's going to be, we, you are going to work on a specific topic today. Because I want you to try um, to try to understand really deeper the, the different, uh, different papers. Okay, so first of all, the stakeholder map, which is the first document that you have, is a map that represents the global uh, industry uh, of the, like, yeah, the global industry of the market that you want to talk. So for instance, um, and it also, yeah, the first circle, sorry, the first circle is going to be the, either the industry or your core target, okay? It's going to be in the middle. This is only in the middle. You should only have one person, one stakeholder. The second round is about um, the, di the direct stakeholder, stakeholder that are in directly impacted by uh, either the industry or by your customer, like your customer. Okay. So, for instance, if you want to uh, organize an event, the first round is going to include. Uh, all the people that are involved in the event management, it's going to be about the catering, logistics and so forth. And the second, uh, the third round here is about the indirect, indirectly stakeholders that are indirectly impacted by the industry. Okay? So, for instance, it could be government, um, it could be other events and so forth. Uh, there are two different stakeholders that you can have. Uh, this, this one here is really simple and the second one here is more about the connections that uh, the connections between all the stakeholders. Okay, so how is a decision, so for instance, if a stakeholder here takes a decision, how is it going to impact the other one and so forth. Um, it's going to help you to have a global picture of the industry and the market. It's also going to help you understand who you need to interview and talk to when you want to launch your idea or, or trying to understand the problem of the entire industry. Um, yeah, this is the problem about Airbnb, so in the middle you have your customer, and then you have the revenue manager, so for instance, someone who is actually managing the revenues of a, of someone, uh, the travel managers, and so forth. And in the, in the third round you have the hostels, the city, and so forth. Uh, so the embassy map that you have on the second page um, is a tool, uh, I think it's going to be useful for people that um, are facing issues to actually take notes and to have um, to understand the goal picture of the interview. So it's something that you can use uh, either during an interview or afterwards. Um, that's what you focus on three different things, or four different things. Sorry. First of all, um, about what like emotions of someone, but also like how he feels and thinks, but also what he sees, like in the, like what is what is his point of view. Uh, what he says and does, and what he hears, like what are his friends saying about uh, a different, like his friends or his family saying about um, a specific topic. At the end, it's going to help you to have two things here about the pains which are the pains facing by the targets, that's the person that you're talking to, and the gains. 
So as I said, it's really important to focus on the why uh, when you have a conversation. Um, what I recommend when you have an interview is either doing it um, two by two, okay, because someone has to ask the question and you really have an active listening, and the second person takes notes, or if you are alone, what you can ask is to record the interview, and after that, uh, take some notes on this uh, piece of paper. Any questions about the two first tools? No? Ah, this is really interesting. I really love this. Um, the journey map is a document, it's like a one, like one page um, that you use to actually retrace the entire day of, a, of your target or the person you're interviewing. Um, it starts at any point, so you can either do it really detailed from the from like when you, when that person wakes up until like he sleeps, or you can really focus on a specific uh, time zone. This is going to help you to actually go deeper in the conversation, of course, but also to see the different um, moments when the target feels really well and when the target feels feel really bad. And the bad, like smiley here, is for you an opportunity to solve something. So, the, like the activities here and the stage of the journey is going to help you to retrace every step. So, for instance, if I get sick and um, I wanted to start a, in, like a startup in the med tech, for instance, someone would interview me, I would say, okay, so I got sick, I look, I look, I look online and Google says that I'm going, to, I'm going to die tomorrow and I feel, I feel really bad and then I'm looking for a doctor and I can't find a doctor online. So, like, you know, I'm feeling worse, worse, and worse. And then I'm going to feel better once I find a, a doctor and then have to wait again because my meet, like my appointment is in two hours and so forth. So, you know the difference? So once you have the different uh, stages, you want to see, okay, the first three steps, she felt really, really bad. And for, and, and for instance, maybe it's going to be an opportunity for me to, um, to provide a, like a solution. Um, so this is a journey map of Airbnb. Uh, why we show it uh, the current journey map of Airbnb is because um, it's for you to understand that the journey map is, uh, you, have, you need to update it all the time. So you're, you're going to have a journey map uh, when you're going to interview your target, but you're also going to have a journey map once you launch your, your company and once it's going, once it's going to uh, evolve and develop. Um, so here, for instance, uh, for Airbnb, I'm not sure if you see well, but um, you can see that here, at the end, uh, when the, the customer has to look for a plane, um, it's kind of annoying because they have to change uh, the website, they're going to see that the plane is the, the tickets are really expensive and so forth, so maybe they're thinking, currently thinking of, um, of a new feature that could include uh, directly uh, booking planes and tickets online on Airbnb. So it's always going to evolve, you always, have to, you always need to have a journey map. Um, Afterwards, so once, if, if we go back, okay, you have a stakeholder map. You know the people that you need to interview, okay, because you have a global picture of all the people that you need to interview to understand and have a global picture. Once you have this, you focus on actually just go meeting the people that you need to, to interview and to, and to observe. You have the interviews. Okay, so you take notes on the impact map. Oh. You take notes of the impact map and then you retrace the journey map. Okay? Thanks to this, you're going to define some different trends. You're going to see that some people are actually having some common traits, like some common traits, actually have this kind of same of profile. They actually do the same, they're kind of doing the same thing, they actually they kind of feel the same things, they kind of like just have the common traits and characters characteristics and so forth. And once you once you notice the common traits, you can define your persona, which is step four. Your persona is has someone studied marketing? Yeah, okay, I saw one one hand. Okay. In marketing it's really common to use your persona. It's kind of a marketing tool that marketers use to put to show you ads and so forth. Uh, but you're, you're going to use it in a really different way. Uh, it's going to help you to be like, okay, my perfect client, my perfect target 
will be that person. And every time you have to take a decision, so you have to bet, of course, on data, but you're going to ask yourself, what is my main persona feeling? How would they react to like this feature? So, a really good persona is really specific and focuses a lot about the behavior and the emotions and the motivations. So, the persona has needs to have a name, age, location, job, um, personality, and so forth. You need to go really deep in the details. Motivation, fixation, and a typical day. So, you can have different personas uh, for, uh, you can have different personas, that's not an issue, that's not a problem, but you have to understand that a persona, like each persona is going to have a different problem. So, it's not one we're going to see it afterwards, but you can't have two personas uh, facing the same issue. It can be closed, but it's always going to be different. So the first person of uh, Airbnb uh, is going to be someone that is like far away from home because he's traveling a lot, and he always likes like he likes feeling when he's away, um, when he's for business travels and so forth, uh, to feel like home. So he's a business guest, and he's not going to um, face the same issues that than Jane that hates to be alone and let's just look and she's being alone in her apartment and she, this is like her motivation to actually rent her apartment in Airbnb. So, because Airbnb is a platform, so they have two sides, they have the guests and the hosts, so you know this is why they have two personas straight from the beginning. Okay, so as I said, every persona is facing a problem. So one persona equals to one problem. Um, the more specific your problem is, the easiest is going to be for you to find some uh, solutions and um, to be creative. So a really like a problem uh, is um, always has a target, an action, and needs to have an objective at the end. Uh, something that you can do is also to put the insights that you have here that are going to argue and going to help you to put um, to argue on. Um, why you think this is the real problem. So the problem, like for instance, if we take the problem from our Airbnb, it would be how could we help travel, travelers with low budgets to better rent, to better rent a flat, to not travel cheaper. Um, so, um, what I want to say, I forgot, but that's okay. Any questions on this? Okay. So now I want you to start, uh, so to take back the first page, and I want you to work on, so first of all you have to, to do individual work, and then I want you to work in, in groups. So I want you, three, four, five, six groups, and I want you to work on a topic, so I want you to observe how you could improve the custom experience of the Hanoi Innovation Summit. And because we only have 40 minutes to do this, um, I want you to actually interview yourself um, because we're not going to have enough time to interview uh, people outside and even you know um, the, 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 the staff and so forth. Um, so first of all, work on the individually work on the stakeholder map, okay? And then I want you to share the insights, and then I want you to interview yourself and start the observation, okay? At the end, I want you to come up with uh, so the journey map of each one of you at least two personas and two problems because it's one persona and one problem. Okay? Let's start. <laughs> 